that we have a plan. I just realized that when Beth and I were here alone, I paused it. No problem. All right. So it is seven o'clock. Let's call the meeting to order. Julie and Bethany, thank you so much for um, being the host of the meeting and you'll monitor to make sure that we bring in anyone that needs to come in. Um, I'm not sure if everybody knows, but Jennifer was not feeling well uh, and will not be at the meeting this evening. Um, so we've called the meeting to order. Are there any public hearings? And again, Julie and Bethany, if you see a hand or you see someone, please alert me. Um, I think I can see everyone on my screen at this point, but if anything happens. Okay. Uh, hearing no public hearings, the next item on the agenda is review of the agenda and perpetual calendar. Um, April is the month for the Our Town newsletter. I sent you all a draft of what I was sending in. And basically it was a plea for the roof. As I said, I'm Jackie, I'm bound and determined to do everything in my power and our power as a committee to move forward with getting those repairs done. Um, some of the other items on that uh, will be addressed this evening. So I think that was about it for that. Warrants and gifts, Steve. I have four, two payroll and two accounts payables. Payroll warrant number 320 dated April 4th, 2022 in the amount of $84,848.75, which I signed on March 28th. And number 321 dated April 18th, 2022 in the amount of $87,165 and 49 cents, which I signed on April 11th, 2022. And accounts payable, I have number 3020, dated March 21st, 2022, in the amount of $16,696.38, which I signed on March 28th. And number 3021, dated April 4th, 2022, in the amount of $26,584.13, which I also signed on April 11th, 2022. Thank you. Thank you for signing all those warrants. And Trevor, do all those match up with what you have? Yes, and I have a couple of additional ones that Caitlin sent as well. Okay. Do those need to be signed by Steve? I'll probably see them next week. Okay. All right. So uh, we'll just let the record show that um, warrants have been submitted. All right. Uh, unfinished business, capital projects, building process. Steve, do you have anything to report regarding anything related to where we are with the roof or? The gym roof is scheduled to be, I don't know if they started dropping up equipment today or not. Oh, they did? Cool. So the gym room is gonna be completed by next Saturday. And that is that is a replacement, that is not a repair. And as far as anything else, the Billings Committee hasn't taken anything up. And we did meet with the select board and we are in the works of reworking what the Billings Committee's responsibilities are, but we haven't gotten there yet. Okay. Trevor has his hand up. Oh, thank you, <laughs> Julie. Trevor, go uh, ahead. Thanks, Julie. I just wanted to note that um, we skipped over approval of the minutes. Oh, thank you. Good job. We were testing you. Uh, so is there a motion to approve the minutes from March 17th, 2022? Motion to approve the minutes from March 17th, 2022. Great. And a second. Seconded. All right. Roll call. Hayes, aye. Rose, aye. Martel, aye. Sullivan, aye. 
Great. Thanks again, Trevor. It does take a, a team on this. Plus, I, I don't know. I, I have glasses, but it seems like I can't wear them <laughs> most of the time. So maybe there's something wrong with them. All right. So, um, Steve, just keep us posted on uh, progress or any kind of hangups. And we'll keep trying to move forward and getting these repairs done. OK, thank you. That is a replacement. And you like to call it a repair, being in the repair business. But this is a replacement. <laughs> And the second half of the roof, that will be a replacement as well? That is correct. Okay, so I'll, I'll make sure I say replacement from now on. Thank you for correcting me. All right, new business. Uh, we're going to have a vote on school choice. We had a discussion about school choice last meeting last month. Is there a motion to uh, accept uh, being a school of choice? My motion to be a part of the school of choice. Okay, and a second? I'll second. All right, and is there any discussion? Uh, Jackie was clear about uh, her, her intentions. I think Steve's got his hand up. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, I just wanna say that without the thought that Jackie has put into this every year that I would not approve this, but she is super careful and she's got the best interest of the school at heart. So I'm more than happy to support whatever she would like. But I also wanna say that I'm disturbed by the um, Pelham School of Choice sign that's up on Leverett Road. I wanted to run it over today with the backhoe when I went by it. What does it say? It's it says, asking if you, yeah. Yeah, I think it says something like now accepting school choice and it says Pelham in the middle. Of Interesting, because we've been getting quite a few applicants from Pelham. And, hmm. it, tell, and it tells you to um, call ARPS. But you, hmm. <laughs> well, freedom of speech. <laughs> All right, so we have a motion and a second. If there's no further discussion, all in favor of being a school of choice, Hayes, aye. Rose, aye. Martell, aye. Sullivan, aye. Okay. Um, next item on the agenda was the Fair Share Massachusetts. Um, I think uh, we received some information on that. Um, <clears throat> Is anyone familiar with what this is about? So from what I glean from the information, it's basically um, looking at taxation and ways of generating uh, increases in revenue by a system of taxing people differently. I think people at a certain income level would be um, increased. Uh, and I think they're targeting some of that money towards education. I believe a few years ago, they tried to do something called a millionaire's tax, um, and that did not go through. So um, I don't, I didn't put it on here as a vote because it, what we do really is not binding. However, um, if the committee so, you know, were to so choose to support or endorse this, um, we could basically um, vote on endorsing that. So is there any discussion about the fair share Massachusetts proposal? I'll say one thing to it. Oh, go ahead, Julie, you go first. I guess I just wanted to say that I think that progressive tax makes sense, but I also am not sure that it's within the scope of this committee. Like I'm not, I guess I don't feel adequately <laughs> knowledgeable about that specific issue too. And I'm not sure that it's, I guess I would wanna understand more about it before I would 
want to as a committee endorse it. I think that's really fair. And we could um, ask the, it, it was a proposal that came through, I believe Kip Fonch, it went to Lauren. I think he thought Lauren was the chair. She forwarded it to me. Um, he did say that he'd be willing to come to the committee to talk about it. But I also felt like you, like, uh, what do we do with that? You know, so um, I guess my feeling was I wanted to bring it forward to the committee because I make no decisions on my own. I am just a servant of the committee to try to bring things in order. Um, but if the committee feels they would like uh, to have someone uh, who knows more about it uh, represent uh, that fair share, Massachusetts, I don't know, I think somewhere along the way I saw amendment, but um, we can invite him at the, to the next meeting. Would the committee feel more comfortable with that? Dan, can I ask, like, are other school committees in our region also determining whether to endorse or not endorse this? Like, is this a, is this like a, a grassroots thing where like other school committees are also considering whether or not to endorse it? Yeah, other school committees are including some within Union 28. Um, and I will say that it's not uncommon for school committees to have resolutions. Um, again, resolutions don't always mean much, but it basically sort of, I think, helps get information out there to get people to talk about things, discussions to, to be had. Um, so that that is one way where people bring it forward to the communities. So would we like to table this and have someone come in and talk about it? And Lauren, I know this was sent to you, but um, we're having a conversation about the Fair Share Massachusetts. And um, I think the committee was thinking perhaps maybe we would want to take up Kip on the offer to come and speak more about it to the committee. How do you feel about that? That sounds good to me. Okay. And the rest of the committee? Okay, everyone's nodding their head. I will reach out and we will see if uh, Kip would be willing to come and uh, join us at our next meeting. So we will table that, okay? Next item on the agenda, uh, legal retainer with the Dupre Law Offices. And Caitlin, did you wanna speak to that? Uh, yeah, in Jen's place, I can try to speak a little bit to it. We have to renew our retainer with the Dupre Law Office. And so I believe a vote needs to be taken to, to do so. Okay. And do we have a, an amount of that retainer? I don't on hand. Um, let me look at the meeting materials and see if there is something in there. Okay. Yep, let me share my screen. I'll show you where, what the retainer looks like. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do you have to be a co-host or anything to share or? I guess we'll find out. Okay. Can you see it? Yes. So I'll give you a minute to Look over it. We've worked with the trade for a very long time. Yep. And um, this is just the new retainer. Okay, four hundred dollars. Yes. Okay. And then it will need to be signed by the chairperson. Great. Is there a motion to approve the legal retainer of $400 with the Dupre Law Offices? Get it, Bethany Rose. A <laughs> uh, motion to move forward with the legal retainer with Dupre Law Offices for $400. I believe it was a month. Uh, total, I believe, right? No, a month. A month. Oh, okay, thank you for catching that. I second. Okay. Um, and Bethany, oftentimes, if you don't want to repeat a motion, you can just say so moved, 
if it makes it easier. Although okay. in your case, um, I didn't have a month, so that was good that you you did it the way you did. Okay. Is there any other discussion? Okay. All in favor, roll call, Hayes, aye. Rose, aye. Martel, aye. Thomas Bacon, aye. Sullivan, aye. Great. All right, reports. Um, I didn't receive anything from Jennifer, but is there anything that uh, we, anyone knows? All right. No, I don't think there's anything to report really. Okay. Um, Director of Finance and Operation, Caitlin. Sure. So we were able to submit our SOI with the MSBA for the roof project um, back last month. And we sent in, um, in conjunction with, with the town administrator, we um, put together a package of all of the things. And since we're priority five, we don't have to submit things in addition, but we um, were advised that it's a good idea to, and we're working on um, some letters and Natalie Blaze and trying to kind of get some additional support for, for the project. Um, we also need to vote on the signing of the engagement letter for the end of year report for audit for FY21. So <clears throat> because of the size of the school, you only have to go through an end of year, year report audit every three years, but we're in that third year right now. So for FY21, we'll need to have that end of year report audited. And I do have an engagement letter from Melanson to perform that audit. I can pull that up if you'd like to see it. Anyone wanna see it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, Caitlin, I want to just um, basically inform the committee, maybe with your assistance. Um, so the deadline for that application was, was it March 19th? March, March 25th. March 25th, right. Mm -hmm. And on March 25th in the morning, you reached out to me because it still hadn't been signed by the town administrator. So all of our, our paperwork, our, our entire submission was all dated March 25th. So we had to wait that one critical day to get everything signed and, and to get it submitted. So it was, you know, a little chaotic trying to, to, to collaborate with everybody and get all the pieces kind of put together for that date. But, um, we, but we were able to submit it successfully. Yeah, it, it was a crazy day, you know, because that was the deadline and that day we were trying to get the last signatures. So I appreciate all that you did to pull everything together to get it submitted. So thank yeah. you. Thank you. And thanks to everyone that, that signed it with kind of very, very quick, um, you know, signatures and, and everyone was very accessible. So thank you. Well, you made it easy. I was on my way driving down to Philadelphia and I pulled over and signed it on my phone. So thank you. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't have anything to do with the technology there, but <laughs> I appreciate it happening. Great. Thank you. Principal's report. Hi, I just have a quick report as we are winding down a very busy time and we are really looking forward to vacation. But um, yes. Oh, Trevor, did you want to ask something before I continue? Oh, yeah. Were you going to vote on the... Oh. audit engagement letter oh my god yeah. thank you trevor so much because you got to do that trevor you're the best maybe i should take minutes and you should do this <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't want that all right so a motion for to accept the uh audit engagement letter and fiscal year 21 end of year report so moved oh great <laughs> seconded Awesome. All those in favor? Hayes, aye. Rose, aye. Martel, Thomas aye. Bacon, Thomas Bacon, aye. Sullivan, aye. All right. And Jackie, I, we did get the letter today about a case in the school, but the uh, student testing was negative, so that's good. I'm sure you're doing everything you can to yeah, and like I write in that letter, we don't even have to send those letters anymore, but um, Katie and I just just to have smooth sailing until the end of the year, we're, 
we're continuing to do it, but that is not a necessary thing, but we do it because we think that some people would really appreciate it and we want to try to make everyone feel as comfortable as possible as we finish out this very long, long year. Um, so uh, yeah, so Steve, like Steve said, we have some um, equipment and big machinery and dumpsters at the school that are there to be uh, ready for their work next week. So that's exciting. So thank you all very much for your support in that. And just in general, um, you know, being an educator in this world, you hear about um, some schools that have some real challenging things going on. And I just wanna say that um, I feel very grateful to have this committee supporting the school. Um, and that is a true genuine statement. <laughs> um, and I feel like um, when we bring things to you, you really listen and you give thoughtful feedback and I, we feel really supported. So I just personally want to put that out there. Um, in terms of the school, uh, we had, uh, you know, we've tried to make March a little fun. March is a really long, tough month and it's a real academic rigor time. Um, and so we had a spirit week that went really well. Um, of course, uh, as you all know, it's been in the road town and everything. We've been doing MCAS in grades three through six. Um, and we've all finished all of the ELA for all of the grades and they did really well. They tried really hard and that's all we ask of them is to try their best. Um, so, that, so that went off pretty well. Um, we've been having um, a teacher from um, the Hitchcock Center come in and teach classes to grades four, five, and six. And this was due to a grant by our fifth grade teacher, Laura Ginsburg Peltz, who is like a fab grant writer. Um, and so uh, they've been enjoying that special, um, special thing and they've been really enjoying it. Uh, Julie's, Julie's kids have been enjoying that. Um, so that's been really fun. Um, we're planning on having an outdoor dance party in May for the school. So we'll invite families to come and have an outdoor dance party on our black top. That ought to be really fun. Um, I think I've told you before, our staff is wrapping up some collaborative PD that we're doing with the collaborative around some, some of our PD was around autism and um, then We've been recently having some PD on English language learners and just basically language differences in kids. Um, and that has been really awesome. And then some big changes in our school. Um, one of them is happy and the other one's happy too, but it's also sad. Um, our third grade teacher, April Cannon, who has worked at the school for very many years, um, is becoming our math coach and interventionist. And so, um, She's not leaving SES, she's just transitioning over into a different type of role. Um, and we're all really excited about that. She went through the whole interview process. Um, and um, that means that we're gonna have a third grade opening. Um, and so we have putting together a committee for that and we're gonna be interviewing people after um, April break. And then our first grade teacher um, is doing a career change actually and becoming a licensed mental, mental health clinician. Um, and she has decided that um, she is going to leave to go to school full time so she can become that sooner rather than later. Um, and so that is the sad part that we're losing Miss Willis in terms of being in our school. Um, and it's a big deal when we lose classroom teachers because there's only one per grade and she is phenomenal, but also really excited for her. She's very excited about this next career shift and um, career shifts can be a scary thing to do, and we are supporting her in that. And um, we just want to recognize how, how much awesomeness and love she's given the school for the since I think she's been working here since maybe tw maybe 2010. Um, so a long time. Um, so uh, so those are two big shifts that are gonna be happening. Um, it's a, a lot of interviewing. We take our classroom position interviews particularly seriously. We have a first round, then we um, invite them in to do a mini lesson in front of the committee with kids. 
Um, and then sometimes there's even a follow-up thing just because we have one teacher per grade. So we really need to make sure it's the best of the best um, for our kiddos. So we're getting lots of applicants though for both positions, which is really awesome. There's a lot of schools that are struggling struggling for teacher applicants right now. It's a teacher shortage as you all, it's an education shortage because it's a rough, sometimes it's a rough place to be. Um, but I feel really lucky that we, it seems like we're having a pretty decent applicant pool, which is, which is exciting. And then finally, um, uh, oh no, that was it. That's the end of my, that's the end of my talking. Um, so uh, happy to answer any other questions, but those are the bigger, bigger things happening right now. Any questions? How will we live without Miss Willis? I know. That's a we're, big one. We all, we're all feeling it. We're all feeling that. Jeez. But also she's like really excited about this next chapter. And if you know Miss Willis at all, you know, you know she's going to be a great <laughs> mental health clinician um, for, for kids and adults. She wants to be a general clinician. So um, yeah, our loss is a lot of other people's gain. I mean, when people hear it, you just need to give them some time to be happy for her. It, like it, that will come in the second wave. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for your report. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, those that will be a big uh, shift, as you said, and uh, appreciate all the time and effort that goes into the selection process, because I agree the the bigger thing is on the front end, you know, really hiring the right person, making sure that there's the right tone and everything else in, in that person. <clears throat> All right, Amherst Pelham. All right, it's been kind of boring and slow. We've just been plodding through our agendas and um, let's see. So we did at our meeting two weeks ago, we discussed the letter that Granby had sent to the region about joining the Amherst region. And it was interesting because it, the letter came from the superintendent, but it was really the letter, the, the way it was start, the opening paragraph started out, I'm writing this letter because the select board is making me write this. I don't want to write this. And so right away we were like, okay, that would be kind of cool if, you did want to join us, but we wouldn't even consider it until it came from the school committee and not, you know, not from the select board. So that was just uh, a no discussion. And the other news is that the um, performing arts department had put on a production of hair last Thursday and Friday, and then Saturdays had to be canceled due to COVID issues within the cast and crew, even though everybody was vaccinated. So it's hopefully a mild issue. And on the um, behavior issues and the police interactions, and that was um, something that, because it's student related, the superintendent had nothing to say about that because it's outside the school's purview. So other than that, I don't have anything else. Okay, any questions for Steve? Nope, it's always something in the paper though. Thank you. <clears throat> Union 28, I don't think there was anything, right? No. And the collaborative, um, thanks Jackie for that report. I appreciate hearing uh, the support from the collaborative. Um, the only thing I have really to report collaborative is doing sort of what we do here at school committees, reviewing policies, looking at budget. Um, but one of the things, and I mentioned it in the past, um, the collaborative was entitled to the Petro, uh, payroll protection program money, the, the funds from the federal government um, to basically pay, pay their employees. <clears throat> uh, however, the collaborative also looked at COVID as, as a way for for them to continue to support teachers, districts, um, families, students, um, and also because of COVID looked at opportunities on what they could do to try to help in different ways. So 
they were able to bill out for those services, <clears throat> which basically uh, once, once uh, a period of time went past, uh, they were able to apply for forgiveness of the loan and that was done by the federal government, which leads them, leaves them with a little bit of money, extra money, <laughs> which is kind of a nice thing to have. Um, so the board did vote to pay off the mortgages on two properties that they own. One is where the collaborative uh, offices are, and the other one is where Heck Academy is. It's a special education school in Northampton. Um, so that basically helps to um, reduce operating costs and saves the money in the long run on interest payments. Um, the remainder of the money, uh, the collaborative is looking at creating a capital plan. Um, and what will happen with that money is we'll need to get approval from all school committees. So I'm mentioning it here today, but that will come before us as a committee to approve the money going into a capital plan. So the capital plan, uh, I'll just briefly mention. So the collaborative has always been looking at, you know, we've been bursting at the seams in our uh, main office. We also rent um, two other properties, one for um, early childhood and another one for the Department of Youth Services. Um, so we've been sort of looking at, well, what are the opportunities? And I'll come back to you in a minute, unless you need, Lauren, do you have a question on anything first? No, okay. So we've always been looking at like, well, what, are, what do we need to do or what are the opportunities for the collaborative? And COVID actually, presented us with an opportunity, which was a lot of people working from home. So I think we had been really thinking about needing to have a new place to house everybody, to fit everybody in. Uh, but with COVID, we've learned that working from home seems to work. Uh, we are actually now looking at um, having the early childhood education. Those people will be working from home. They'll have space within the collaborative. Uh, to use um, sort of like workstations. So we're already looking at eliminating one rental property and we're trying to figure out how we can work the other property that we rent those people in or working from home as well. And also working with a model on um, people that work within the central location of the offices. So, um, I'm just mentioning that because that has been something that we have been had we've had on our radar and we've been working with, but it really makes me happy to see um, from our executive director Todd Gazda and the team that he works with that they're constantly looking at opportunities, um, also thinking outside the box, uh, working with the constraints and uh, of COVID. But I'm I'm happy because it really we're looking at sustainability. So this is helps to reduce costs and uh, keeps us in the location that we're at. And also it works as a um, tool to not only retain people, but attract people. Uh, we needed a new treasurer, um, someone who over, oversees sort of our, our accounting practices and, and bookkeeping uh, and office management. Um, we were able to attract uh, someone from uh, somewhere some other part of the state who will be able to work remotely. So again, I think uh, COVID has presented some opportunities here. So um, I'll be bringing that to the, this committee at some time in the future. Other than that, um, I'm excited to go to the different graduation ceremonies of the students. Um, it's honestly the reason why I do what I do because I get a lot of satisfaction when I go to uh, a Heck Academy graduation ceremony and I hear the students talk about their experiences and how, how they were or where they were when they came into the program and how they feel now. I also get a lot of satisfaction going to Mount Tom Academy, hearing about students who couldn't make it in a regular high school and the opportunities that Mount Tom Academy offered them. Um, these are students oftentimes with, uh, in stressful situations, um, students who are suicidal, and again, to see their transition, their growth, um, and also going to uh, Westfield, to 
where incarcerated youth are, are, are meeting, are graduating. And again, to see their families and to, to, to hear about the support services um, that are offered to these uh, individuals to help them succeed. And in, Mass in, in the United States, Massachusetts leads in um, the services that we offer for incarcerated youth um, with a low recidivism rate. So I'm really happy and, and, and honestly, it just makes me happy to just see that. So um, I'll be going also to, they have a, a art program in Boston where they display the artwork from incarcerated youth, which is also art that goes up for sale. I go every year, it's an incredible event. The last few have been uh, remote. I'm not sure exactly how it's gonna work this year. They say it's hybrid, so we'll see. Um, but lots of great things happen um, over there, uh, including uh, migrant programs. So of course, with the influx of a lot of people from other parts of the world coming into our country, a migrant program is a way for migrant workers to get support for their children who uh, may be moving from one district to another. Um, I'm happy even in where I work in East Hampton to be, to be able to connect a farm in East Hampton that has a lot of migrant workers with these programs because it really helps those students. It helps young adults get GEDs. It, there's lots of services for them. So uh, the collaborative offers a lot of different services in many different ways and uh, it's phenomenal. So that's it for that. Policy review, we have a final reading on policy JRA, student records. Do we have a motion? Bethany, you gonna just keep going all night? Sure, so moved. <laughs> all right, Julie? <laughs> Seconded. <laughs> all right, any further discussion on that policy? Okay, all in favor? Oh, I'm sorry, Trevor. I just wanted to say in the, in the agenda, it says final reading, does it not? You're no, right. Not. But it is a right final time. vote, so it's a final vote, not a final no, reading, right? I think it is a final reading, which is weird. Which, that's a weird thing. I think it was on last, hold on. Um, well, so in the last, in the March minutes, it was the first vote. So this much, this has to be the final vote. The agenda is just, yeah, okay. it's just a, Good. Thanks, Trevor. So we do have a motion and a second, right? Okay, all in favor, Hayes aye. Rose aye. Martell aye. Thomas Pickman aye. Sullivan aye. Okay. And we have on the bottom future business. I think we can all look those dates. Yes, Lauren. Sorry, I wanted to go back for a second. Um, I realized to say that my um, sophomore is participating in hair and they are going to try to reschedule that performance because I did not get to see it. Not because I did not get to see it, but um, I did not get to see it. It's 14 and up show, but, um, and just a plug, in general for the the Amherst High School theater program. It's really phenomenal. They'll be doing their student writings um, pretty soon as well. Great. Always good to give a good plug in there. Lauren, right. that makes it super extra cute that I just found that preschool performance where <laughs> they did the extra flourish at the end. That's so cute. She's a performer, no question about it. Wow. <laughs> My girl. Nice. All right. Is there anything else that anyone would like to bring up? Say, ask. No? Lauren, your hand's still up, but that's from before, right? All right, good. Well, if there's nothing else, uh, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you all very much. You have a nice evening. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Thank you.